Hey everybody, welcome to Bricks and Bytes for another week. Great to have you here. Um, say hello in the comments. My name's Ben and uh, we have Emma as well in the studio. Hey everyone. Great to have you here. So today we've got a really cool episode. We're going to be talking about Minecraft. So some of you might be familiar with Minecraft, I'm guessing. Um, we're going to hear from uh, Debbie and Josh from Mod, and they're going to talk to us a little bit about nature and Minecraft and how that works together. That'll be interesting. Um, for our creator challenge, I'm going to do a little uh, build to show you how to, um, I guess, build things in nature out of Lego to make it look maybe a little bit less blocky. And Emma has a cool augmented reality app to look at this week. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that, Emma? You guys might have heard of it already, you may have had a play around with it, but it's really cool and it's just bringing Minecraft into your world. Great, awesome, thanks Emma. Um, let's see who's here. Aaron's here, hi Aaron, great to have you here. Feel free to leave a comment and we'll, uh, we'll say hello to you a bit later. Um, but first, <laughs> it's our <laughs> weekly favorite, we're gonna do our five minute frenzy. So. Um, if you're joining us for the first time today, our five minute frenzy is where we get challenged to build a Lego creation that's in this cup. We're not sure what we're gonna be picking out today. Um, and we have some Lego pieces here. If you want to join in at home, you can also play along. You can grab um, some Lego parts and build along with us. So we're gonna pick out our challenge for this week and we have five minutes to build this. So let's see what we have. Okay. All right, <laughs> we have, I don't know if you can read that. Oh, up and close, no, probably can't. It's a snake from Dowick and Ooh. Dowick's 11. We have to build a snake today. Now, if you um, had seen one of our previous videos uh, where we had a Lego uh, five minute frenzy special edition, you would have seen that the snake was one of the first things that, were off, uh, that people had to build and it was challenging. So mm -hmm. now it's, now it's our turn, it's Emma. It's our turn. Do we want to do it similar or completely different? Let's see. Okay, we will see what our snake looks like. Okay, <laughs> if you have some Lego at home, we're going to get our five minutes on the clock. Yep, ready, set, and go. Okay, so we have five minutes now to build a snake. Oh, I don't even know where to start, really. A Long snake. skinny pieces, right? Okay, so this is... Oh, I'm on the right today. I must... Ooh, and Emma's mixing on the left. <laughs> <laughs> now, we don't have a nice big base plate like the other ones did. That's right. When the other people built them, they had something to build on top of. We have loose parts. Okay, so a snake. Each week is a mm. challenge because we, we sort of spend <laughs> two minutes actually looking at what parts we have mm -hmm. and trying to work out what we could use. Because we have snake. different parts almost every week. All right. It's crazy. I think... We're just going to get into it. Yeah. All right. A snake, a snake. So I guess you could just do a long skinny snake would be <laughs> that'd probably be the, the quickest and easiest option. Indeed. <laughs> I'm going to try, I don't know. I'll probably say I'm going to try too hard. It will probably be... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, ben always pushes himself. It's oh. good. Okay, I'm gonna, today I'm just going to try and build in front of the camera because I'm doing the I same. Don't. I'm actually trying to put it on the ground for once. Uh. Um. All right, maybe I'm going to start with a head. Maybe once I build the head, that'll give me an idea of how big this thing is going to be. Right. Let's do a sleeping snake. Okay, so I'm hunting for these, for these sort of snot pieces. Always looking for those. <laughs> um, what else do I want? I just want a tongue. A tongue for a snake? That... Ooh, that is important. Thanks for the tip. No! <laughs> <laughs> no, it's my idea. Um, um, oh, this one is tricky. Hmm. I remember Jane and Paula said that they were having trouble when they had to build the snake. Yeah. I can, I, I'm appreciating the challenge here. Definitely. Oh, this is a good part. I'm going to use this part. All right, we're almost halfway. What? No, I know, no, no, somehow no, no, no. Already. Why does it always come up so quickly? 
Do I? I don't know if I have eyes today. <laughs> you do. I told you. Oh, I, just, I just have to find them. What is this eye? That's not a tongue. What have I done? Oh no! I'm trying to do it. How much time have we got? Two minutes. No. Okay. Let's just. Okay. <laughs> All right. He's got some curliness-ish, as much as you can with bricks. Oh. Um. I don't have a tongue though. Ah, oh, I remember what Paula did to get hers a bit better. Do you remember Ben? No, I don't. I, I remember nothing. <laughs> I just remember laughing that they had to make a steak and we didn't have to do it. And now <laughs> look at us. Now, now look at us having to make a snake. Oh, come on. Okay, okay. Um, How much time have we got? We got have one minute thirty. One minute thirty. Okay, okay. Um. Ah. Oh no, where are all my parts gone? This is not the best snake. Just putting it out there. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, I don't know. I don't know what mine is. Okay, okay. Oh yes. No, that's not good. I was going to try and make like a cobra, like, oh yeah, that's almost going to work. Oh, 45 seconds. No, 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 no. Coming to the end. Where's that other eyeball? I'm trying to get creative with this one. This is the most creative I've probably ever tried to get with That Lego. is, um, that's the risk though, isn't it? it? It really is. I have to find a way to connect this head to the, oh no. Ah, don't oh, break no. it. Don't break. Where are we? I'm so close 22 to the seconds. end. <laughs> 20. How do I connect this? Ah. I need to connect this. I need to connect it. Oh, no. This is horrible. I'm, I'm it's missing not, an eye. It's not easy. The head. Oh, my. No. Is it falling apart? It just exploded. Oh, my God. No. Seven seconds. Six seconds. No. Right, I'm going to stop. I'm stopping. No, 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 no. No, no, no. There we go. Yeah. Time. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. I'm, I, I'm still going. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know what I've made here. Oh. Interesting. Seriously, I don't know what's happened to mine. I was trying to be really creative and um, right. I will show you mine. <laughs> <laughs> First. You're building up. I was, okay, I'm going to just clear this out. I tried to. What happened there? I tried to make like a cobra. Like That's really cool. Curling around. <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> but, it looks angry. I like it. I don't know. Okay, it need it, it's missing a tongue. Like if I had done this, like with a tongue, oh, <laughs> it would have fallen. Huh? I was just, I was just afraid the whole thing was going to collapse. Okay. Oh, that's a long tongue. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that's cheating. All right, let's have a look at yours, Emma. All right, this is mine. Can you see it? Oh. So this is its head with its tongue and its eyes, and then it moves because I use this tricky piece. Hey. Ah, that keeps falling off. Weird. That is cool. But it moves. And it's like a, it's a nature snake. It's got, <laughs> I got fancy with it. It's got like a tree on it. It's like its own little world. It's got its own ecosystem happening. There's the ocean over here. There we go. And you've used, you've used your shell. I did. I used the shell. I wanted to use the shell. I told Ben that was my own challenge for today. <laughs> and I've done it somehow. I actually really like that. Like. I like the whole thing that it's its own world. Like you could it put is. tiny little people on there. I could. I should. What would you name your world? Ooh. <laughs> Snakeopolis. <laughs> Snake City. Snake City. All right. Oh. Okay. Well, there we go. So we've got Emma and Ben's snakes. If you've made a snake, we'd love to see you make a uh, show, show us on our Facebook page. Show us your creative ways of doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I'm so I, impressed that you feel upwards <laughs> and it curls. It's, very, like it's really cool. It's very flimsy. Okay. <laughs> Don't look at it too long. It will break. Okay. So there we go. That was our five minute frenzy. I hope you enjoyed it. 
Um, actually, talking about nature and uh, talking about how we can create nature or experience nature, we're going to hear now from uh, Debbie and Josh from MOD. Now, MOD is a, uh, it's a science museum here in South Australia, um, and they've been doing some really, really awesome stuff online, uh, including some, uh, some things in Minecraft. So we're going to hear from them now and listen to a bit about um, how we can experience nature virtually. Hi Bricks and Bites, my name is Debbie. And my name is Josh. And we are from MOD and we're going to be talking about some cool parts of Minecraft science today. So let's just switch my view and look into the world. We're in a very cool spruce forest at the moment and we want to talk about a concept called biophilia. So Josh, can you tell me what biophilia means? Certainly can. So bio means life and philia means love. So biophilia as a term is essentially a love of nature or a love of living things. Exactly. And the reason why we want to look at this concept is it's important to us as humans because we really enjoy nature, even if we don't always know it. And the reason for that is because we only lived in cities very recently and a long time ago, people lived around nature which means we evolved to enjoy nature and actually get a benefit from it. So in nature, we feel joy because our brains release endorphins. And endorphins are brain chemicals which calm us down and make us feel nice and relaxed when we go to places like beaches or forests. Exactly. But sometimes we can't go outside, especially now when we've had to be stuck at home or if it's winter and it's really cold. But maybe we can still have fun in nature in a virtual world like Minecraft. Definitely can, definitely can. Oops, I'm running into a tree right there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kind of weird to think that we can enjoy nature when it's not real, like in Minecraft, but there are a few reasons why we can do this. So some of the things that make us happy about nature are colors, sights, sounds, uh, light, and we don't believe it's real if we don't see any randomness. And you can have a listen and look around our Minecraft world. So I can see a cow over there. Minecraft does do an incredible job at making things feel very random. Like it doesn't look like there's a structure and a, uh, an algorithm controlling everything essentially, mm. but there actually is, but it hides it incredibly well. Exactly, so we can hear the sounds of our feet we can hear the sounds of the chicken, we can hear the sounds of the cow, but they're all really random. Those sounds aren't uniform. That means that they're all at different times and that makes us feel a little bit more like we're in nature. A couple of other things you might notice are there's lots of different colors in the world. We've got green, we've got brown, the blue of the sky, the yellow of the sun, the white of the clouds, even the spottiness of the cow. And that makes of it... course, this is just one of the biomes that we're in because there are many, many others that exhibit completely different sounds to the ones we're experiencing now. Exactly. And that all goes into part of that randomness. So you can see the trees are all different heights and that makes it feel a lot more real than if we built a whole forest made out of one color with one type of tree with one tree of one size. Oh, here's some water. So we can see that all of these things together make it feel a lot more like real nature. Even though it looks like a block, even though it's square, it still stimulates some of those endorphins that release in our brain, even though it's not real. It really does, it really does. Particularly if you're playing uh, Minecraft survival when you find water that you've been looking for or find food or find an animal, you get this really exciting rush, which is Ooh, just fantastic. <laughs> Yay, oh, there's that some is foxes so here. Cute. And they're so cute, so it makes us like it even more. And the one thing that we can't see in Minecraft, because we can see things like light, sometimes it goes darker, especially if we're under a tree, we can't get smell. And that's one of the very few things mm. in a virtual world that we can't get from real life nature. There's a couple of other things as well that Minecraft can teach us, especially about how to look after nature. So we've got a lot of things that we need to think about when growing things in nature. If we're growing a farm, we need to make sure there's water. And that teaches us that even in the real world, water is a really precious resource. We don't want to run out of it. We also know that if you mine things that are not renewable, so if you're trying to mine things like iron, eventually you'll run out. And we don't want that to happen because that does happen in the real world as well. 
And we also know that if we cut down lots of trees, we need to replant them so that we have a good space for our animals to live because they'll disappear without those trees. So thank you very much for joining us for some mod Minecraft science. Hopefully you can have a little bit of a closer look at your Minecraft realm next time and have a think about some of the things we talked about to see whether you also gain joy and feel a sense of biophilia towards nature in Minecraft. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye everyone. Great, thanks for that, Debbie and Josh. That was a really different take on Minecraft. I haven't, you know, thought about all of this, the sounds and the sights and the different ways of experiencing nature in Minecraft. Um, you know, you can create your own farms and all that sort of thing, and you, the need for water and sunlight. It's really cool. Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, if you want to uh, connect with Debbie and Josh a bit more, you can check out the uh, Mod Facebook page. And you can see what they're up to. So you can have a look at their uh, Minecraft world and some of the projects that they have there. Um, you can also go to their website uh, to see more of what Mod is up to uh, at the moment. And it's really, really cool. Okay, so let's just have a quick look in the comments and see who's here. Great to see you, Albie. Fantastic. The team from uh, Kids in Adelaide are here. And... Uh, Emma, there seems to be a bit of a, uh, a disagreement about who won the who won the challenge. Was it? who won the five minute frenzy? Was it? <laughs> it was a pretty good five minute frenzy. I'm impressed with both of us. Yeah, I I, I really liked both the builds. <laughs> Very different. But Very good. different. Cool. All right, talking about builds, let's have a think about our next part of our show, which is our creator challenge. So um, each week we have a creator challenge, and this week we're doing one about building nature. Now, one of the challenges with um, Lego is that it does look quite blocky, right? So how do we make it look a little bit more organic uh, and make it look a little bit more natural? So I'm going to show you my board here. Oh, I also have a, a skeleton here <laughs> with a saxophone. There we go. All right. So I was thinking about how to show you how to make an environment that looks a little bit more natural. Now, um, last week, uh, in the comments, Kai asked for us to build an animal habitat with an animal. So I thought I'd do that today, not as part of our five minute frenzy, but as part of our uh, um, creator challenge. So I built an animal. Here it is. Oh, I'm going to flip it around. Um, Emma says it's a dog. I, um, to be honest, I don't really know what it is. <laughs> it's got ears. And it's got a little tail. And, uh, and it's got a friend who's a skeleton. There we go. Okay, so we're talking about an animal habitat. So you can see here we've built sort of like the ground and it is a bit blocky, it's green and I've got these slopes. So how else can we add some, I guess, some more natural elements? So I thought in the background what we would do is build a waterfall. Now to build a waterfall we need water and we need a bit of a cliff to, for it to come off. So to build the cliff, I'll show you this. So... Um, Debbie and Josh talked about a bit about randomness and how that helps us appreciate nature. And in this case, I've tried to just to put all these different slopes and bricks in different directions, okay? Just to give you that sense of randomness. Now, I've got a lot of these slopes and all these big gray bricks. You might not have all of those at home and there's we can try and approach that in a different way. We could use plates like this all stacked up on top of each other and that will what we'll do we'll mount it sideways you know just like we, what we looked at last week uh, with our sideways building we can do that with this so I've got one of these pieces here and we'll put that in the back all right so that's another way of adding you know a bit of randomness and a bit of you know texture to your builds. Now we're going to put the waterfall in. So with the waterfall, what I've done is I've just got lots of slopes and just pointed them all in different directions. So some sloping one way, some sloping other way, and it's meant to look like water rushing down. Again, we'll do the same sort of thing. We've got one of these pieces here with the studs on the side, and we'll slot that in. There we go. So we've got like a little waterfall scene. All right. So let's talk about the water. Now, 
with the water, we could just fill that up with bricks. But what I really like to do, and it's a, it's actually a lot faster <laughs> than trying to put the bricks in, is if you want that sense of randomness or if you want that sense of it being a little bit more organic, instead of connecting the bricks, we can just um, we can just put them in loose. So here we've got a waterfall and a lot of rushing water. So there we go. So your water can be loose and at the bottom of the waterfall, let's say it was a little bit rougher, I have got a whole bunch of different white parts here. So I've got a mix of clips, wheels, a couple of butcher's hats, <laughs> all sorts of things. But the idea is that you sort of make it look a bit random. And there we go, we've got our little water feature. Pretty cool. And you can shake it around, you can hear the bricks rattling. Okay, so we've got some cool water features. Next we're going to look at some plants. So with the plants, you can see here, I've got sort of an antenna piece. and I've just slotted in some of these round plates. And what's cool about these round plates is that I can move these in different angles. All right. You might, I'll put this one at the back. You might want to put some plants in. When you're doing little plants like this, you might want to change the size of them. So this one's got two green parts at the bottom and one colored part at the top. You might not want to put them right on the stud. You might want to put them in between the studs. So the more you mix up where you place them, the more random it's going to feel. Okay, instead of just filling up all, the, all of them, you can leave some of the studs spare as well. If you have a part like this, okay, so this is one of these plant pieces. You can put, what's great about these plant pieces is that, you know, it's already has those angles that you want pointing out. So I've got one flower on there and I'm gonna build on top of that flower. There we go. So now this is sort of angled off to the side a little bit. I've got a couple more here. And now you've got nice like a little bouquet of flowers there. Or a little bush. And what's cool about those is that it takes the Lego off that main up and down stud. It sort of goes off to the angles, whoops, <laughs> and gives us that sense of it being a bit more organic than your regular Lego build. So there we go. There is a little challenge for you. So this week, have a think about how you can build maybe a little habitat for an animal or for a, uh, a fun-loving skeleton. <laughs> and think about different ways you can do that. So you can have parts off to the side, like just angled a little bit. You might have these loose parts in there. Um, <laughs> don't make it too loose because it'll keep falling off. Um, <laughs> but there you go. Have a think how you might want to build something uh, that looks a little bit more random than your standard straight builds. Okay, very cool. If you do build something this week, please post a photo on our Facebook page or in our Facebook group. You can jump in there and join the conversation. We'd love to have you there. So next, we're going to hand over to Emma, who's going to talk to us about another Minecraft-related app. And this is probably a newish Minecraft game um it isn't minecraft dungeons it's a different one that you can play on your phone and emma's going to talk, talk to us about minecraft earth yes okay. yes i am so minecraft earth is an app you can play straight on your ipad um we're going to jump straight in and start looking at it so we're opening it up you do have to create an xbox account to use minecraft earth but it's pretty easy to do you log straight on and there we go we will open it up minecraft earth uses ar similar to pokemon go so you are able to bring minecraft right into the world into the map that you're on which is what's really really cool about it so as it signs us in i'll start there we go. So it's giving us the warning to pay attention, which is very important. And here we are. So this is me at the library. You can see walking around. That's my little Minecraft person. And you can see all these little things around me. So there's trees, 
all the kinds of things that you can collect in Minecraft are there. So to collect them, you just tap on them, and then you tap, and then it's yours. And it's in your inventory, and you can take it wherever you want. So we're going to collect a few of these. Sometimes it breaks down into what is creating that piece. Sometimes you don't just get a chicken you might get some better. Sometimes you get a chest that's full of all these different things, which we're opening now. And you collect all of that and you can use it to build later on. We can also grab this pig, because I love collecting all the animals in Minecraft. Especially when they jump at you. That's hilarious. And there we go. So we've collected everything that's around me for now. And you can slowly complete different things. Now we're going to have a quick look at crafting. So I'm clicking into the crafting menu. about 30 seconds so we'll jump into smelting and this is where you can create things like glass or bricks so we're going to make some glass we might make a few so we'll make three and hit okay. there we go so that one's going to take a minute or 20 so you can speed it up but we're just going to wait for this yellow die to finish count down you can see it bubbling away and then you can use this later on there we go, we've got some yellow dye. So now we'll jump back and we can actually have a look at all the things that we've collected. So you can see some of the things that I picked up on the map as well as the yellow dye. And the more things I collect, the more things I can put in my journal and I can know about, which is really cool. There are also these challenges that come up for a little while. They last for, this one lasting for another 10 days where you can, this one's to collect an extra pig, cow, chicken, sheep, all those things, and you slowly work through, and then you can eventually get some really cool prizes, and more of the rare items, which is awesome. So we're gonna go into build plates. So this is where you can actually play around and build and do all that kind of stuff. You can collect things, you can, yeah, modify it to whatever you want it to be. This is the true Minecraft. So you just need to hold your iPad or your phone out and hit place. You need a bit of space to do this, as you do with all AR. But you can see I get my pick up and we start collecting bits and pieces. And I can modify it, I can put my chicken in the real world and all kinds of stuff. And anything I collect in this build mode is going to stay in my inventory. And anything that I add to this build mode will stay there. So you kind of get to build whatever you want. screens AR does take a little bit of time so you've got to be a bit patient but it's definitely worth it so we're gonna go back into our build place and then scroll down and hit the play button this time rather than build and this is gonna take us in so that we can actually stand in our build play and interact with it a bit more so this is where you need a lot of space and there we go so it's real world size so we can actually see all in the library there's a chicken in the library you can kind of walk in your world that you've created and this will have all the stuff that you've put in there. You could do whatever you want with it. Really. You can out with the pig. And you can still collect and play around in here, which is pretty awesome. There's lots you can do modifying it still, but whatever you do in your play mode doesn't stick. It's not permanent. When you go back into your build mode, you still have all your other stuff there. join you but then they can steal your stuff so make sure you trust them next and this is probably the last thing I'm going to show you is adventures so usually they come up 
in certain areas and they're random so I can't really go find one. But you can also collect crystals and when you first download Minecraft Earth it gives you a couple of crystals. So we're going to activate one and then there we are. We can go on an adventure now. So let's hit play. Um, so this one's a 10 minute adventure. And so it's just letting you know to be really careful about where you place it. You can place one in your home and it'll last for about 10 minutes. You need a lot of space for this again. Put it in the backyard maybe. But there we go. We'll hit place. And so this is similar to the play mode, but you didn't build this and there's all kinds of stuff you can buy. So collect stuff through here. Oh, I won't kill the pig. <laughs> He'll run away from me. But what's really awesome is there's often stuff underground and you can actually die in this adventure mode. And things that you take from your inventory and that you use will actually disappear once you've used them. So this is more like your classic Minecraft game. But yeah, so this is adventure. You can do whatever you want with that. You can collect things and you can invite friends to play along with you in the same adventure, which is really cool. <laughs> So we'll head back to the map and you guys can see those are the things I collected. But yeah. And that's what an adventure looks like if you see it just anywhere. That's, yeah. So that's Minecraft Earth, essentially. It encourages you to walk around a lot more. You can edit your character if you like. There's a whole bunch of skins. Some of them are coins in purchase, but you do get some pretty cool ones as well. And yeah, that is the gist of it. The more and more that you actually walk around and collect things, the better your experience will be because you'll get even more stuff. It's a bit like Pokemon Go. It wants you to get outside and get active, which after all our talk with nature is actually really awesome. You can experience your 8-bit nature through Minecraft as well as the real world. So yeah, there's Minecraft Earth. Cool. That, that looks really cool. I, I downloaded Minecraft Earth a while ago mm -hmm. and I didn't realize there was all this stuff in it. So that looks like a lot of fun. Maybe there'd be something you can do other than Pokemon Go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> okay, well, thanks for joining us this week. It's been really good. We built some snakes. We <laughs> heard about nature and Minecraft. Um, we looked at how to do a little bit of um, nature building with Lego. And we also just had a quick look at Minecraft Earth. If, um, if you have a play with Minecraft Earth, this week let us know we'd love to hear your experience um show us what you collect show us what you craft maybe you even your your um your your plate and see what sort of world you're creating um but we will see you next week it's been a pleasure and uh have a good week and we'll see you later bye, bye.